Hello and welcome to the section of the circuit analysis tutor. Here we're going to solve this circuit on the board, which I'm going to tell you now looks deceptively simple, but there's a reason to why I'm presenting this to you here. What we're trying to do is find out what is the total power dissipated in this circuit. So ultimately, and we're going to use the mesh current technique obviously, and so what we're going to do is uh, figure out what the mesh currents are and then look and see where all the currents are going and figure out what's absorbing power, calculate everything that's absorbing power, and that's going to be when, they, when we use terms like dissipated, it means you're absorbing it and you're kind of getting hot or something, you're dissipating that power instead of delivering that power. So it's everything that's basically uh, absorbing power in the circuit, which are definitely going to be the resistors. And we'll do a sanity check on the sources to make sure they're not absorbing power either. So the first thing you do is you look at this thing, tackle it any other way, and you see two meshes. Uh, we're going to label them right now. So we'll call this guy lesh mesh A. So we'll call it I sub A. We'll call this guy mesh I sub B. So then, uh, and we notice by the way that we see this current source. We've kind of, I've kind of cautioned you to be careful when you see current sources in a mesh current problem. Uh, we'll, we'll just get to it when we get to it. So the first thing we need to do is, um, is notice that just as a sanity check, I know how to calculate the voltage through here. I've done it many times. I know I can write negative 18 because I'm going up through this way. I know I can calculate the voltage drop across here. Now when I get to the current source, I get stuck because I don't know what the voltage drop is across this current source. All right. Now if you remember in the last problem we had a similar situation. We tried to do the loop. We couldn't find the voltage across it. But see there was an easy way out in that one because that current source in the last problem was on the bottom on the outside edge of a circuit. So we knew that the mesh current down there was just equal to the current source. But see this one is an internal current source that's shared by two different meshes. So you can't really say that I sub A is equal to 3 or that I sub B is equal to 3 because you should know by now that we've been subtracting mesh currents all the time to find out what the real current is there. So we really don't know a good way to write a mesh current here. We don't know the voltage and we can't make a real simple, good simplifying assumption like we did in the last section. So here's your secondary caution. Anytime you see a current source, and we'll figure out in a minute, a minute that it could be independent current source or dependent current sources, we'll get into later. But anytime you see a current source, if it's on an outside edge of a mesh current problem like it was in the last section, you handle it just like we did last time. You just say that the mesh current's equal to that thing the current source that you have if it's on an outside edge and you're fine. Case B is if you'll have some kind of current source internal that shares meshes. In this case you have to do it like this. You have to bait, well there's, there's two ways to do it. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Um, the first way and then I'm going to show you something called a super mesh. Remember in the node voltage section we did super nodes, right? Where we kind of drew giant nodes and we kind of kind of got around some of these problems. Here we're going to end up with a super mesh. But before I show you the super mesh, I want to show you kind of how you can arrive at the same thing, much like I did for the node voltage section. So what you, you need to kind of assume is that there has to be a voltage drop across this, this current source. There has to be. You just don't know what it is. So you can label it like this, plus, minus, just call it V. You know that if this guy's supplying current, then there has to be a voltage drop like this across the source so that it's delivering power and delivering current to the rest of the circuit. The, 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 the polarity of the voltage can't be reversed because if it were positive here and negative here, then the thing would be absorbing power. But anytime you have current going from negative to positive, we treat it as delivering power. So we have to write the voltage like this. So we know there's a voltage drop across it. We just don't know what it is.